Good evening. Good to see so many faces after a long, long time. All these days we were preaching to empty chairs. But today it's nice to see some chairs all being taken up. We welcome everybody who is on online with us. And let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, this evening we thank you. We thank you that once again we could gather again at the house of the Lord. We thank you, Father, because when there is the, your people are gathered together, there is a commanded blessing that you release. So we pray this evening, Father, that you will release your blessing upon your people. May your word be a manna to us this evening, Lord. May your word be an encouragement to us this evening. And may your word, Lord, help us to do what we are called to do, preparing us for everything that God has for us. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people said... So it's an interesting topic, as you see, it's about healthy living. Damien, nice topic, no? So I think during lockdown, I don't know how much healthy eating we did because we were only eating and sitting and doing nothing. So I think it's a good time to reflect back what do you mean by healthy living? We know that we are, God, man is made in three components. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. But in Christianity, most times we give attention to attending to our soul and our spirit and we neglect our body. But what does the word of God say about our body and how should we as people of God look after our body in order to glorify God? Because God did not design and build our human bodies to be a liability. They are precious gifts crafted and sustained by God to enable us to live and do good for his glory in our world. And that is why you and I have a body because we are called to do something for the Lord in his kingdom for the glory of God. Matthew 5.16 says, Jesus says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. How do we do good works? We do good works through our body. Unless we have a body, we can't do any good work. Romans 12.1 says we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So that is something that we are called to do. And we know a sacrifice should be unblemished and unwrinkled. So our bodies should be in a way that we can present it to God in the way God wants us to present it. Romans 6.13 says present our members not as instruments of sin, but of righteousness. So the members of our body are instruments of righteousness which we are to present before God. True fitness means our bodily ability to serve other purposes. This body is fit to do something. But the question is, fit for what? Because there is a competition in the world where we want to get our bodies fit for something of the applause of the world. But we as Christians in the kingdom of God, for what purpose should we get our bodies fit in order to please God? In Christ, we have far better answers to that question than secular workout culture. Now Paul wrote to two of his prot protégés, Timothy and Titus, be ready for good work. 2 Timothy 2.21 and Titus 3.1. So be ready for good work. And that's what the Lord is telling us, his church today, is to be ready for a good work that God wants to do through you and for me. We need to be ready to move and display God in the world that is around us. Ready with our hands and arms, with our feet and legs that pulse with energy and eagerness and feel life, not exhaustion with every movement that we make. Beloved, how we take care of our body is an expression of our love for God who created us and we show respect for Him for what He created. So we need to understand that we are a creation from Him. Psalm 139 verse 13 says, You formed my innermost beings, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. So we, each one is a unique creation, woven by God, made by God, for a purpose of God. So we have something that God wants each one of us to achieve in our lifespan in this world for His kingdom and for His glory. We are God's masterpiece, beloved. The Creator knows what is best for His creation to function at His full optimum. Now that is why we need to understand 
what is God telling you and me in, in the essence of how to look after our body? So let me place before you three facts to know the importance of why we should take care of our bodies and the correct approach and understanding to it. Because the approach has to be correct, otherwise we could fall on the side. The first aspect is, body care is an aspect of Christian discipleship and worship. So it is not just something that we look after our body. It is of Christian discipleship and worship. 2 Corinthians 7.1 7, in the Message Bible says this, With promises like this to pull us on, dear friends, let us make clean a break with everything that defiles or distracts us, both within and without. Let make our body, uh, let's make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God. Now this scripture that is in Corinthians, in the Message Bible translation, gives us a good description why our body should be, it will become a discipleship of worship to God. As Christians, most times, we think that what really matters is our soul and our minds and tend to neglect the body. Yes, our souls are important. Yes, our minds are important. Likewise, our body too is important. But the above Christ scripture tells us that looking after our body is also very important in our life. So we must make a clean break with everything that defiles and distracts us both within and without. The Passion Translation puts that we must remove everything from our lives that contaminates our body and spirit. Now as Christians, even I have been telling my friends, my cousins, when God delivered me out of any desire for alcohol, I said, why should I put alcohol into the temple of God? But then we don't think like that when we put certain foods that is also bad for us into our body. Because we think that food is okay. But we think alcohol is bad. But there are certain foods that God would want you and me also to keep away depending on how God has made us. How God has constructed us. Because what is good for me may be not good for Dr. Srilal. But what is good for him may be not good for me. So it doesn't matter because for every creation it's unique. So God is the one who can show us what we need to take and what we need to keep away from. Beloved, we know in the world many people has made fitness an idol and spends a lot of money and time on it. Gymnasiums are thriving. Most of the time we saw during lockdown, people are waiting, when is the gymnasium going to open? Because they want to go to the gymnasium. Because they want to prime their body. Aritra, were you waiting for the gymnasium to open? No, that's good. So... That's how people think of looking after their bodies. But as Christians, our approach to fitness and motivation must be making our bodies a living sacrifice to God. So what do I mean by a living sacrifice to God? There is a different approach, a God approach and a world's approach in looking after our body. Because if we understand that, then we will know how we should approach to look after this temple of God as against look aftering a body as the world sees it. God's approach is based on abundant life work. Because Jesus said, I came to give you life and life abundantly. So to have an abundant life, you and I can't be limping, you and I can't be struggling, you and I have to be full of vigor and enthusiasm because God has asked us to live a life in abundance which is most vibrant, most impactful, and most fruitful in life. Those are the three things that we need to do as we live out for God, is to be vibrant with His word and His calling, impactful to the people we meet, and be fruitful in life, because God has called us to be fruitful. The world's approach is how to create an artificial shape, because that's why people go into the gym. What do they want? They want six-pack. A nice look, six packs. Or oh, today, if you read the papers, cricketers have been asked, what is your skin fold? If your skin fold is not this, you are not fit to play in the team. So, that, so there is always a struggle from a spiritual angle and from a worldly angle, how we approach looking after our bodies. This is where the spiritual truth of Jesus Christ helps us to overcome the physical challenge of healthy living. 
because there is a physical challenge but when we understand the spiritual aspect it is easy for us to overcome this challenge because that will give us revelation and understanding spiritual truth gives us an entire new motivation now there is many people who lose, who set themselves to lose weight because they have something as a focus many who are getting ready to get married will always try to diet lose weight so that they will be a beautiful bride and a handsome groom during the wedding and i know of a person when he, uh, when he had a daughter late in his life he gave up all his uh, eating pleasures so that he will be healthy because when the daughter gets married he wanted to be healthy so there are different different aspects of why or motivation of why we want to have a healthy body so as christians what is our mot motivation as christians we must treat our bodies as instruments instead of ornaments because in the world it is the bodies they like to have as ornaments but we are an instrument in the hand of god an instrument to be used for god's glory romans 12:1 says beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable in other translations it says pleasing to god which is your reasonable service oh, that is what romans 12:1 says so losing 20 kilos won't make god love you more or putting on 20 kilos won't put make god love you less the reality is some of us need to lose weight and some of us need to gain weight but all of us have to offer our bodies to god as a living sacrifice beloved in the world people want their bodies to be pleasing to more than to them even to others the moment we offer our bodies to god it becomes pleasing to god just the way we are our holiness and acceptance does not rest in the shape of our bodies our acceptance is on the sacrifice of jesus bruised and broken body on calvary that's our acceptance and that does not change but that does not mean that we abdicate looking after the temple of god just like we look after this auditorium we don't want cracks in the auditorium we don't want things dirty in the auditorium we will look after it because we call it the temple of god the place where his people meet but we our bodies are the temple of the holy spirit and we are it is important that we look after that temple that is pleasing to god 1 corinthians 6 9 18 and 20 says do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your body therefore honor god with your body so we need to honor god with our bodies honoring god with our bodies beloved is an act of discipleship it is disciplining ourselves it is saying god no i don't want anything that is not pleasing to you that takes place in my life i want to honor it to you my body doesn't belong to me for it was bought at a high price on calvary your body doesn't belong to you beloved it was bought paying a high price on calvary we need to understand because sometimes we think my car my petrol i will use my body the way i want i also thought like that many times because you think that is that is my right this is my body how can somebody else tell me this so that i'll come to that in a moment so we know we must not approach fitness from a me perspective i want to look better appear and feel better is not necessarily wrong but we must be but but if not careful it could be spiritually seductive why am i saying that we might be looking at gluttony and overeating or slothfulness and not taking care of ourselves and we might be exchanging it for vanity and selfishness because if we do it with the wrong purpose in mind with the wrong motivation in mind it can become vanity and selfishness we may look better to the world but our souls would not, not look better to god and it won't be an act of discipleship but we are only trading two different sins and we won't be people who are alive in christ 
our purpose of our bodies is to be instruments as God's servants. Instruments as God's, in God's hand. God should be able to use your hand, my hand, our feet, our mouth, in all our, our faculties. God should be able to use as instruments and that's why we need to keep it fit and in good shape. But this is not all a physical challenge which takes me to the second point. It is also a spiritual challenge. Sometimes we don't realize it because when it comes to fitness, there is an important lesson. There is something that Lord repeats three times in scripture. And if he repeats something three times in scripture, it has to be important for us to have a revelation and catch on it. And it is the word humility. Proverbs 3.34 says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. James 4.6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And 1 Peter 5, 5 says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let me share something of my life here, because this is important at this stage. It is ironical, it is, for last Friday, it is 13 years since I got a course correction to live a healthy life. When I had a heart condition and I had to change my entire lifestyle, it was a difficult period of three months, but in it, God changed me. But I want to go sometime before that, God always gives us warnings. And when God gives us warnings, sometimes we don't become humble in order to listen to that warning and take heed to that warning. And that's exactly what happened to me, I believe, because the Holy Spirit reminded me of something I had completely forgotten. And I was, and as, as, I was, as I was reflecting on it and thinking of it, and today I know that my our dear good friend, Mr. Ranganathan, who is here, is part of that conversation. I don't know whether Renga would remember in 2001 or 2 when we at Selinko was doing the pension plan, we had all have to go through a medical. And uh, Renga was the head of Selinko Life at that time who did, uh, who did our medical. And when my medical report came, uh, Renga called me and said, I want to have a chat with you. And he said, Roshan, look, your triglycerides are high. Your, your sugar levels are also a little high, not too bad. Your cholesterol is high. You must look after yourself. You are still young. You need to exercise and do all these things that needs to be done. So I told, thank you, thank you very much. And I came, but what did I do? I did nothing. I lived my life on and on and on. I was not humble. I did not have humility to take an advice from another person who saw something and said, you need to course correct. Do something now. Yes, it took seven years for me to have the heart condition. But I believe if I was humble enough at that stage to listen to that man who was concerned about me and who said something about me, I may have even avoided that heart condition. So that is what happens, especially when it comes to fitness. We don't like anybody telling us, no, no, you need to cut off this. I'm sure the doctors within our means will know that whenever they tell that to a patient, that's the last thing that we want because we are so enamored and caught up with what we love in life. Body care requires immediate sacrifice for delayed rewards, beloved. But indulgence has immediate rewards for delayed consequences. And that's what happened to me. I had an immediate reward, but I had delayed consequences. Maybe six or seven years after, thank God he still spared me, but I could have lost my life then. Because God had a purpose. But I would say to everyone, don't take that chance. My sacrificing today is for spiritual benefits of tomorrow. It does not only affect us how we handle ourselves at the table, it affects the way we handle our finances, the way we parent, the way we do our ministry. Because it has a cascading effect on everything we do when we are not humble and listen to what God is trying to tell us. Because God will speak to us through people. God will speak to us through different, different channels. But we need to have an ear to listen to that, beloved. We sacrifice today for eternal rewards. But in reality, 
it is challenging so let me illustrate through illustrate this point through a story that i read recently there was a boy who was going through a field and there was this uh, there was this uh, barn which had horses and suddenly the boy saw a big fire in this barn and he quickly ran and told the uh, person the the rancher that there is a fire and the rancher came running out and came and went into the went into the barn and brought the horse out and told the boy hold on to the horse's reins tightly until i go and bring in the other horse and he went and brought the other horse also out so the boy asked why did you ask me to hold the reins of the horse that you brought out of the fire because you could have let go the horse would have run away but the rancher said no once you rescue you need to hold on to the rein tight otherwise the horse will run back to the burning barn and die that's the nature of the horse why it runs back to the place it's used to the place it felt safe the comfort zone because the horse does not realize it's a dangerous place the horse just runs back there most of us have such familiar bonds they help us to cope in times past we run into them every time even though they mark our destruction for some it's comfort eating to others it could be drinking or binging and different other different different vices beloved god is calling us to an abundant life out of the barn which we thought is safe i want to uh, place a quote before you by dr mark hayman it's a very interesting quote food has the power to heal us it is the most potent tool we have to help prevent and treat many of our chronic diseases what you put on your fork dictates whether you are sick or well slim or fat depleted or energized how true it is it all depends on what you and i put on the fork living an abundant life is coping with the immediate problem how do i concentrate how do i get over a life that is imbalanced here is why we should engage in healthy living because it not only i believe that is a spiritual challenge will build humility in us not only i believe it will build perseverance in us it will also bring build compassion to help another as we see of what we have gone through it is so key as we all have bottled up differences and disappointments and beloved none of us are safe from this i would say from this uh what should i use the word safe from this testing i'll tell you a nice story which i read of two men of god great men of god how many of you have heard about Sp charles spurgeon some of you have how much you have heard about dwight moody you have heard about dwight moody also so one day charles spurgeon invited moody to preach and minister in his church moody preached on a sermon on smoking and it was a well known fact that spurgeon enjoyed his cigar every night so after the sermon everyone was wondering how would surgeon react to the sermon but after a brief silence the sir uh, spurgeon has said mr moody i will put down my cigar when you put down your fork so see each one of us has a barn now what is that barn it all depends beloved now that that means we all have a place that we take comfort in that we take solace in i know what my barn you know what your barn is it is where you go when you feel stressed or when you feel shamed that's your hiding place that's our hiding place eating something we shouldn't eat drinking something we shouldn't drink getting hurt and writing off relationships spending something you shouldn't spend are some of the examples that i could give here again i would like to show share something of my life testimony of how I went into a barn because of disappointment because of hurt because of something I experienced which I did not expect now all of you know God when he called me out in 1995 
uh, the, one of the first things that he did within two months was to completely take away the desire for alcohol in me. But in 2005, when I was going through a, 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 a season of disappointment, if I may put it that way, it was a struggle. And I was, going back, I was getting tempted to go back to the barn. And it was May 2005. I can remember uh, very well because it was, the, it, was, it was Vesak weekend holidays. We had gone on a holiday. And during that holiday, for 10 years where God has kept me out for any desire for alcohol, I ended up drinking one bottle of brandy. I went into that barn and I thought this is my comfort zone. But thank God that Sunday when I came to service, the, there was two ministers from Canada whom I greatly love and I still keep contact with, uh, 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 Leroy and Lynn. And Leroy started ministering and Lynn started breaking out in prophecy and Lynn got up and he called me, not even five minutes into the service, called me to the front and said, are you still born again? Now, anyone, some of you were there. I'm not, none of you would have known what that was reason for. But God knew what the reason was. I had gone to the barn. The barn that would have destructed me in the future. Where I would have felt safe and secure at that moment. But I would have been destructed in the future. And thank God, since that day, he turned me around never to go into that barn again. It's what you look, go look. At, and go when you feel stressed or shame. Beloved, if it is robbing your joy, your vitality, your energy, look at it as a burning barn and resolve, this place I will never go to. It may get you through the days, but it will surely shorten your days. That's what would have happened if God did not rescue me in that time because he loved me more than even I had imagined. And the third and the vital point why we should be caring for our bodies, caring for our body is caring for our mission. Because you and I are all here for a mission. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27 in the Message Bible says this. I am running hard for the finish line. I am giving it everything I have got. No sloppy living for me. I am staying alert in top condition. I am not going to get caught napping. This scripture when I read in this translation said everything. It says no sloppy living. So let's not get into a position of sloppy living, beloved. Because that will be a temptation that can destroy it. And let us stay alert and in top condition. And not, got, not get caught napping. Because we don't know which way the Dusra or the Gugli would come. Beloved, don't just get through the day. But start using your day. The reality is if you don't care for your body, you don't care for your mission or care for your purpose. So if you care for the mission God has given you, if you care for the purpose God has given you, then we need to start looking after our body too. It is through our body we express our purpose of life. It is through what we demonstrate and do we express the purpose of our life. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 say, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For for the joy that was set before, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Beloved, to this time, we know the Olympics are on, but God is calling us to our Olympiad. God is calling us to set our eyes on the author and the finisher of our faith. God is calling us to run and run the race, not just to run, but to win. Because that's God's promise for each one of us, beloved. It is not to simply run, but we are meant to run with endurance. Because the race that has been set before us can be long, but the price is great. It is important to remember that we do not put the race itself or even the price before us. It was God who put the race and the price before us. It is God who has put each one of us on a track to run, but knowing that with God, we can win the price. It is not a track that we are to fail because God will empower us to run and win the race, beloved. The race that's set before us requires a lifestyle. 
one quite similar to a professional athlete. A professional athlete has to train and condition their body, soul and mind and discipline one's life to achieve victory. So there is a connection, body, soul, mind needs to be given to God so that our lives will be changed around and lead us to the place of victory that God has for us. We have much in common when it comes to running the race God has set before us. Especially when it comes to running with endurance and creating a lifestyle of godly excellence. Because God has given us the spirit of excellence. The Holy Spirit to help us, to push us, to lift us and to carry us where God wants to take us, beloved. Like the professional athletes, we have to watch what we consume. Using godly wisdom to know we should allow ourselves to see, hear, and eat properly as the Lord leads us. Because all these three affect our life. What we hear, what we see, it's not only what we eat. Work and stretch our muscles like an athlete. Muscles of faith stretched out in this hour, knowing that God will come through. COVID will not survive. God's victory is coming, our muscles of faith. God will provide when we don't see how God is going to provide. Acts of kindness is things that we do. Even if we don't have much, we give of little what we have. And that helps us in that stage and helps another. And godly thoughts and actions is what we should be doing. Create goals, understanding the call and purpose God has given us and allowing his wisdom to help us create long and short-term goals to fulfill his will upon our lives. We need to limit distractions like an athlete does, knowing what our call, purpose and goals are. We are able to see distractions and how to limit them. If we know what our purpose and our goals are, you and I will, will immediately spot distractions when it comes into our life. Maintain a passion. Passion is a deep desire, but it cannot be led by emotions. There are tasks that we do not like. There are days that we do not want to train, but every step is necessary to reach the prize. We have to find that passion and determination daily, beloved. We must learn to perform in good times and in bad, in seasons of plenty and in seasons of lack. We press in to fix our eyes on God, running the race, no matter which season we are in. Today, you may be in a difficult season, but be encouraged, fix your eyes on God and run through that, that stage of the race and you will come to a place that God will give you much in abundance. Fix your eyes on the goal. Jesus is the ideal place to fix our eyes because even those things that God has set before us to do can lead us off track if they become more important than he is. So importance, God first. Not anything that God has put before us. By fixing our eyes on the goal on Jesus, we not only maintain purpose, but are able to find joy in all circumstances. Because the word of God says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Shall we say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Because that's where our strength comes from, beloved. It's from the joy of the Lord. Yet even with these disciplines, there will still be days when things get off track. When the enemy on our own desires or our own desires lead us in the wrong direction. Where we do not feel like doing something or where things are taking too long for our liking to happen. This can lead us to consume things we should not. To get out of the lifestyle of training and bringing on whatever we want. Don't ever allow that to happen. Be it self-pity or selfish desire or trying to take shortcuts and break through doors and was not meant for us and get into another athlete's lane. That's what sometimes tries to happen. Sometimes we say, no, God is looking after us. Everything is good, which is true. And I was reminded by the Holy Spirit this morning, even as I was contemplating just before the message was to be preached and he reminded me of a certain thing when i was in hilton and at that time Garmini fernando was director of uh, was the general manager and he said all heads of department yearly must do medicals 
So we know that all of us have to go through medicals. So what do we do? One week before, we eat the gulia. Why the gulia? To bring the cholesterol down. For one week, we don't take sugar. So that your sugar level comes down. Yes, there is a three-month sugar coming, but then you excuse it. My wife's birthday, my daughter's birthday, my grandmother's birthday, my somebody's birthday, and you are okay because you, you satisfy yourself, you're fine. Now, these are things that we can fall prey to, and we will say, I will never take, a, I will never check my sugar, I will never do this because God is my healer. But I don't think it is right because those are things God has given us to check so that we can course correct if the need be. If God is my healer, that will come normal. But we interpret it. No, if I do that, I am not putting my faith in God. But that's how God has spoken to me. So we need to understand that what God is telling us in this hour. This is why Jesus needs to be at the center of our focus. Our gaze because he is the coach of a, like a professional athlete. He will tell us how to prepare. He will encourage us as we prepare and run our race. He will guide us when, we, when he needs to. And that's what God has been doing in my life for the last 13 years. It's amazing sometimes I think how God has completely healed me. No intervention. Today I don't take a single tablet because the cardiologist has stopped everything which does not happen. Sugar levels are normal. Cholesterol is normal. How? It is because God has brought in into me a lifestyle change. But I still, once a month, I, 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 I say, Lord, I want to check how my sugar is. And what do I do? I don't wait without eating sugar. The last time I checked, we had good curd and honey and even hakuru into that for, uh, for a dessert for lunch. And the next morning I checked my sugar, it was 96. It's not testing God. It is trying to see, has I been living the right way? Do I need to control myself? Do I need to pull back in myself? Do I need to do something differently? Have I let go of what God has asked me to? God has given us a free will, beloved. We do not have to keep him as our coach. He will not chain us to himself. He will, let us, and he will let us run in another athlete's lane out of jealousy or stop running altogether if we don't choose him as a coach. When we give him the attention and freedom to coach us, only then he can and he will come and empower us. He will empower us for all what you are called for. Now some of me thinking, no, I may be old enough. No, no, this is not the time for me to look after the body. But I don't know how many of you read this. I don't know whether it was you and or somebody uh, had, um, had, had, made a, had made a comment. The middle age now is between 65 and 75. So everyone here is either in your middle age or coming to your middle age. Because they are talking of a lifespan of 130 years. And it is not from Fra because the Bible talks of a lifespan of 120 years. And that God can give us if God chooses to do so. So until God says so, it is up to us to look after our bodies. And I believe that anyone who of you are in the middle age, I'm just coming to my middle age, you can be rest assured, God will strengthen your muscles, strengthen your bones, give you vigor and vitality to do what God has to call you to do for many more years. You have, you have heard what our beloved pastor says. He says he will live beyond 100. And why is he saying that? Because he knows God can keep him white his vitality going, his, his thinking smart in the way that God wants to do that. So let us be encouraged today, church, that we are not old. We are not put aside. Today we can say, God, I want to do all what you have for me. I want to fulfill my mission. I want to fulfill my call. I don't want to keep miss out anything to it. I want to train my body so that my body, soul and spirit will come as one and it will be such a great uh, power that will work in the hand of God. We are not only able to run the race, but run it with endurance. 
1 Corinthians 9 24 says do you not know that those who run the race all run but one receives the prize run in such a way that you may obtain it running in a race is one thing but winning is another as children of the most high God we are meant to be more than conquerors beloved we are meant to run in such a way that we can achieve the prize and that ultimate prize is salvation the crown of life in Christ Jesus that is the ultimate prize that we can all achieve in reality the price is a gift of grace something we cannot earn but in the race we run the race of the upward call we can achieve a price and the price of hearing well done good and faithful servant the price of being allowed to bring God's kingdom and his will upon the earth and have an impact and influence in the place that God has planted you and me in whatever mountain of influence God has called you to, in whatever God has placed on your heart to do for his kingdom, by fixing your eyes on God, removing any weight that holds you back, as you follow him, you will not only have endurance needed to run the race, but to win the race. And that's God's promise. Give a hand clap to Jesus. As the pastor said, clapping does not spread COVID. It doesn't matter if the race God has put before you involves running a business, working in an office, raising children, a housewife at home, teaching, preaching full time, or even driving a taxi. Whatever he would have you do, it is important, beloved. It is important. So whatever he would have you to do is part of the race he has put before you. And no matter if we are in a season where he is keeping us hidden on a distant mountain roads or having us run in a full uh, stadium with people. He wants us to run as if each portion of the race is most important. Some of you may think, no, God has hidden me in a mountain place. Nobody is seeing. But you run as God has called you. Do what God has called you to do. Keep doing it. When one day the finish will always happen in a stadium that is full. And everybody will stand up and applause you. Even as you come running into the stadium. Victorious in Christ Jesus, beloved. He wants us to run if each portion of the race is most important. He wants us to fix our gaze on him so that he can help us run and run with endurance. So as I come to closing today, I may ask you this question. Are you ready to run your race with endurance? Are you ready to run your race with endurance? Yes. Are you ready to run in such a way that you will achieve the prize? Yes. Are you ready to run the race of faith? Yes, that is what you are called for and I am called for because Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith in 2 Timothy 4, 7. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God in Acts 20, verse 24. Beloved, it is time for a lifestyle of faith, of obedience, of kingdom purpose. We are all kept here for a purpose. Yes, the lockdown is no longer. Yes, things have opened out. But what am I doing? What are you going to do? What are we doing with the mission God has given us as, we think, as things open out and we can interact with people? That's going to be the challenge for us in the coming days. That's going to be the place that God is calling us to run, where he has planted us, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your school, in your university, in the courts of Sri Lanka, wherever it may be. That's where God is calling us to run the race. It's time to fix our eyes on Jesus and run and then keep on running, staying the course until we reach the prize, until we hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Because that's what we are called for. Keep running. Don't stop. Don't look back. Because when you look back is where the problem starts. Don't forget, the word of God says the end times are like the days of Lot. And we know what happened to Lot's wife when she looked back. 
So let us not look back, but let us look to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, and press on on that upward call, forward and upward, because that's what God has called you and me to, uh, beloved. So I today, I want to encourage you. Your body, my body, is important to God. And that's why I want to title my message, Everybody Matters to God. Everybody matters to God. Our bodies matter to God. Our lives matter to God. Our calling matters to God. Our mission matters to God. Our families matters to God. The job we do matters to God. Everybody matters to God. So let us children, Christians, live a healthy living by understanding that body care is an aspect of Christian discipleship and worship. Because our body is the temple of the Lord. So we can live the abundant life Jesus has promised us as instruments for a purpose and mission that God has for each one of us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father, that today we can come before you, Lord. We thank you that even as we come before you and we present our bodies as a living sacrifice to you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to take it. We take our offering, Lord. Lord, any blemish, any wrinkle that is there, let the blood of Jesus heal and make us whole because your body was broken for us and because of your body was broken my body was put together and made whole and today I choose to offer my body to you to offer my life to you take it Lord and use it as an instrument in your hand so that you can be glorified in my life is the prayer I want to close with Father we just want to thank you let's rise to our feet for a moment you make that calling of what God has called you to. I only express what God has put in my mind. God has challenged me through this week, through the last two weeks in preparation, so that I will be ready for what God has called me to. I will be ready, energized, and be willing to go that distance that God has called me to. And God will give you that anointing, empowering, and the grace to do what we are called for. May the Lord bless you as I call Brother Lalita, senior pastor, to take over the altar call. Father, we thank you for that forceful message in the time of a Laodicean church, lukewarm church. We needed this message. Thank you, Roshan. Lord Jesus, we want to give our life as a living offering. Living offering. Lord, we are calling for health into our body. In Jesus' name. Health into our body. In Jesus' name. Lord, every cholesterol plaque in the brain artery or heart artery, remove now. In Jesus' name. Remove now. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we pray for the alimentary canal. Every cell in the right place, in the right way. We don't want any cancer cell in the colon, stomach, or anywhere else. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are proclaiming the sacrifice of faith and the rule of peace. Rule of peace. Shalom. Peace in the body. Peace in the soul, peace in the spirit. Now may the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. So today we are applying that scripture to mean remove all that which is not holy, not wholesome, not healthful. Will you agree with that? Out of my organs, remove those things are not wholesome, not healthful. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the bladder. We pray for the genital urinary system. In Jesus' name. We pray for the womb and the cervix. In Jesus' name. We pray for the ovaries. In Jesus' name. Perfect peace. Menorrhagia, no more. I command you. Subdue, subdue. 
dysmenorrhea and pain no more no more lord jesus we pray for healing would you mind if i take a little time for praying for this kind of healing father in jesus name jesus name jesus name lord we pray for breasts that no unnecessary cell no cancer cell no wrong cell no cell changing in jesus name in jesus name perfect peace perfect peace lord in situations of conflict we pray for perfect peace in situations where there have been bitterness family struggle family conflict we erase the past we erase the past we pronounce healing health peace my peace i leave with you my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give unto you let not your hearts be troubled neither let it be afraid peace those who are online please join with us we are commanding peace according to 1 Thessalonians 5:23 peace in your spirit peace in your soul peace in your body in jesus name lord we pray peace for all certain in base diseases migraine you are not going to harass you are not going to trouble that stressful perfectionist nature that brings on migraine heal 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 that critical perfectionist nature heal 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 thank you holy spirit shall we address hypertension in the name of jesus christ of nazareth it's you blood that cleanses me it's your blood that gives me life it's your blood that took my place in redeeming sacrifice and washes me whiter than the snow than the snow my jesus god's precious sacrifice my jesus god's precious sacrifice Now let's pray for someone in your family near dear to you for salvation bring them under the blood of Jesus and those who are online if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ or you receive but you don't know whether you are saved you are going this way that way let the blood of Jesus now assure you let the blood of Jesus cleanse you let the blood of Jesus speak to you a better thing that your past is erased what is in your past is not going to come into your present and your future will be blood filtered filtered by the blood of Jesus Christ let's say together lord jesus what my past is not coming to my present and my future my children's future my health my wealth will be blood filtered filtered by the blood of jesus christ Thank you Holy Spirit Father I want to pray for hypertension this rebellious blood pressure in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth come into order in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth come into order and there's a thing called the basal metabolic index that is it 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 has it in some people it sets itself high and it begins to accumulate calories and cause fat Father in Jesus name we bring it down to the good 23 good 23 come down come down come down come down father in jesus name in ji we need expect a supernatural obesity decrease supernatural fat decrease lord we know that we must keep our physique we must do our fitness we must do all this shall we give a hand clap for that forceful message we needed in this laodicean age thank you lord jesus but now i'll be asking for mercy clemency grace that we will get a god help god help god help in our metabolic system healing healing in our metabolic system that we will not put on unnecessary weight and our satiety will be set up easy under the blood of jesus healing 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 
What a healing, Jesus, I found in you. What a healing, Jesus, you restore, refresh, and renew. What a healing, Jesus, for such a time as this. Arise on healing wings, thou son of righteousness. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. If there's anything, anything more, uh, anything that troubles you, will you cast it upon the Lord? Lord, we cast every uncertainty. Whatever breach, the rule of peace, the blood of Jesus has given you last week, will you call that the blood of Jesus covers, the blood of Jesus heals, blood of Jesus forgives, blood of Jesus erases, 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 erases in Jesus' name. Lord, at the age of 40, those inherited diseases in family lines that are trying to pop up in Jesus' name. We are blood washed. We are asking for a God legacy, God inheritance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, passing 65, those organs that try to be disabled, unable, or going through natural decay like osteoporosis, osteoarthritis in Jesus' name. We ask that your healing hand, your supernatural grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace, supernatural grace come upon us that our tissues and joints and entire arthritic system will function well, 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 function well in Jesus' name. Amen.